Oh, really? I had a pretty good attendance in that. Okay, this section is on logarithmic, logarithmic functions and bear graphs. So the first three problems are just kind of evaluating what a logarithmic function looks like on a graph. So I'm going to kind of put these all up here at the same time. Okay, so just this is numbers one, two, and three. So if you go to your y equals, now how are we going to type this in? Log base seven of x. If you hit your math button on your calculator, and then you'll scroll down all the way to a. So after the numbers, there's this A and it says log base. Is that your, did you say that? Okay, so just hit enter. And do you see how it gives you boxes to type in those two spots? Okay, so you'll just type in the seven down in the base spot, right arrow over, type in your X, enter. So let's see, let's go ahead and graph it just to see the shape. So you'll notice this one comes straight up my y axis, crosses the x, and then goes in, that, in the right direction. So let's see why. Let's table this and do some tables. So go down to hit math. Right, let's do number two. Back to your y equals and clear it out. This time, this one doesn't show a base right here. That does mean it's automatically base 10, but I don't need to use the math, the log base function. I can just use the log button on my calculator this time. So log x close. And if you graph it, you'll see it takes pretty much the same shape. So let's table this and get some points. Again, one, zero. Now remember all the exponential functions had the point zero, one. They all crossed the y-axis at one last class. These are all crossing the x-axis at one. So let's look, let's see, at two, point three oh one, three point four seven seven. So it's gonna look very similar to this last one. So there's a point at one zero. 
to the right two, up just a little bit, right three, up almost a half. So there's that logarithmic shape again. I, I just put, I just use log instead of, no, it, it will be base 10, but you can just use that instead of log base. If you don't see a base. Yeah, the, yeah. if you don't see a base of your log, it is understood to be base 10. All right, number three. Again, back to y equals, this is ln x. There is an ln button on your calculator. There's your x. Again, graph it, whoops, graph it. Same looking kind of graph, right? This is, so second, let's table this one. Again, there's my one zero. 2.693 and 3 is 1.10. So 1, 0 to the right 1, up and down 0. To the right 2, up 0.693. To the right three, up 1.1. 1. 1. Okay, so that's what the logarithmic function looks like on a graph. Now, let's talk about what a logarithm is and how to find it. I like to think of a logarithm as like a missing exponent. So for through the next several problems, we're finding the logarithms. So number four is log base two of four. equals what? So we'll think of that as the unknown. <clears throat> when you're finding a logarithm, the first thing you wanna do is look at the base. And you're saying, what power does this base need to be raised to in order to equal what's in that position? So what is two to what power equals four, two? So this right here, the log is two. It's that exponent that the base needs to be raised to to equal what's in this position. So you could rewrite it like this. Say, okay, two to what power equals four? Two to the second power equals four. Number five, same thing. Log base three. of 27. So in other words, three to what power is 27? What power do you need to raise three to? Three to the first is three, three squared is nine. What's three to the third? 27. So the exponent or the log is three. So I kind of like writing them in exponential form that because I just am more familiar with that. Number six. So how could I write this if I wanted to write it as an exponent 10 to what power is 10? 10 to the first power, right. All right, two to what power equals one 
fourth. So what's happening here? The two has actually flipped. That's what turned it into one over something, which means my exponent is going to be negative, right? So think of this as two over one. Flipped would be what? One half. How do I make that one half into one fourth? I need to square it. So this, this X right here needs to be negative two. Also, every single one of these, I can put this in my calculator, right? Using that log base, go to math. Down to log base. Enter, type in the two in the base spot, arrow over, one over four in my parentheses. So there's your negative two. So you can push all these in the calculator. Okay, let's look at number eight. When you see ln, that's called the natural log, and it's actually log with a base of e. So the two things that we need to remember is log with no base is automatically log base 10. You just don't see it. ln is the same thing as saying log base e. All right, let's type it in our calculator first. So just type in this LN button. So in parentheses, I need one over E. So one divided by, and then if you look right above the division button, you see that blue E. So I'll hit second E and close it. Enter, and it's negative one. So let's see why they got that. LN is the same thing as saying log with a base of E of one over E. So this is saying E to what power gives me one over E? So what happened? The E flipped, which means it's a negative exponent. And it's negative one because this e is just an e, right? It has it wasn't raised to any other power, so that's how you get that negative one. Log ten. What's the base? If I don't see it, ten. So ten to what power is ten? Good. Number 10. Log with a base of five equals, or log with base five of five squared. So what does this say? Five to what power? Equals, what is five squared? 25, you could write this as 25 or five squared. What does this X need to be in order for this to be this? Where five squared is five squared, or five squared is 25. All right, number 11. Before we get on number 11, let's talk about what does it mean when your fraction or your exponent is a fraction. So if your exponent's negative, that means you're flipping. If your exponent is a fraction like this, that is the same thing as saying the square root of nine. Nine to the one half power is three, just like the square root of nine is three. Those two things are interchangeable. This is whatever your root is. So 27 
to the one third power is the same thing as saying the cube root of 27. Okay, you can type either one of these into your calculator and it's going to give you the same answer. So if I have log base four of the sixth root of four, that means I need to do what? Four to what power is going to be equal to the sixth root of four. So what does this exponent need to be in order for this to be the sixth root of four? What are they? One over six. Yep. Good. Number 12, log of 10 to the negative six. So again, don't see the base, which means it's automatically 10. So let's see, 10 to what power equals 10 to the negative six, what needs, what does this need to be for both of these sides to be equal? Or in other words, what does equal mean? The same thing, right? So what does this need to be for these things to be the same? It needs to be negative six. Yes. Yeah, so the first thing I did was add that red 10. So 10 to what power is equal to 10 to the negative six? This, this right here is your answer, that negative six. And again, this can all, I like to do it out by hand, but this can all be done on the calculator too. Let number 13, you have log base 625 of five. This one's tricky. So what am I doing? 625 to what power is equal to five? So it's not going to be negative because what does negative do? Flips. It's going to be a fraction. That's right. So I need, or in other words, what root of 625 is 5? Let's see. 5 squared is 25. 5 to the third is 125. 5 to the fourth is 625. So I need to do this as one fourth, right? This X, I need to take the fourth root of 625 in order for it to equal five. Now, again, if you are confused, in order to type, this is my original problem. If I want to type that in my calculator, for sure, at least to check, right? So you'll type in log base. So math down to log base. You'll type in your 625 down in the base, arrow to the right, put five in parentheses. Enter, it tells me 0.25. Now remember, you're always, if there is parentheses under the answer spot that you're about to type in your answer, that's it's gonna tell you how they want it typed in because it's going to say type A fraction, okay? Which means what do I need to do to this 0.25 if I'm not sure what that is as a fraction? Math, enter, enter. So there's your one fourth.
Number 14, log base 11 of one. So this is what I always do first. I always put equals X and then turn it into an exponent situation. So I'll be more familiar with it. 11 to what power is equal to one. What is the power that always makes you equal one? Zero. Anything to the zero power is one. So if this is a one right here, pretty much doesn't even matter what this is, right? It can be any number. If you raise that number to a power and you're equal to one, then you are a zero power. 15. All right, I'll work it both ways, calculator and board. What is LN if I wrote it with a base? Log base E of E to the third. So all I did on this first step was turn LN into log base E. Now I'm gonna set up that equation. E to what power is equal to E to the third. So what does this need to be in order for these two things to be the same thing? Three. If I put this in my calculator straight from the get-go, I'd have LN, so just hit your LN button. Now inside that LN, look at right above, if your E has an exponent, see this blue E to the X? That's what you want. So you're gonna hit second LN now. So it'll put an E in there and it'll put a box right up where your exponent goes. And then close it. So LN of E to the third is three. Number 16. Ln square root e. So remember, ln is log with the base of e square root e. Now remember, what does this mean? Your exponent's going to be a fraction, right? Fraction exponents go with radicals. So e to what power is the square root? of E, what is the square root exponent? One half. Now, 17 through 20, it's going to give me an exponential equation and ask me to convert it to a logarithmic equation. <clears throat> so on number 17, it says 10 to the sixth power equals one million. Which is true, right? 10 times itself, six times gives you a million. But it wants me to write this as a logarithmic equation. What is the base of the exponent? 10. That's also going to be your log's base. So it's going to be log with a base of 10. And then it's kind of like these guys switch places. Log base 10 of 1 million equals 6. Okay? All day long, we've been going turning logs into exponents, right? 10 to the 6th power is a million. So these two things, this is the exponential equation. That's the logarithmic equation. The base of your exponent is going to be the base of your logs. And then these two switch places. Make sure when you're typing this into math lab, you can just type in LOG from your keyboard. And then down in your toolbox, it's gonna give you a thing with a blue box down below. So that you'll be able to type in that base 10. After you type in that base 10, you're gonna have to right arrow 
to get out of that base to type in the wrist, right? Number 18, convert again from exponential to log. Nine to the one half power equals three. So the base of your exponent is also the base of your log. So log base nine, of three equals one half. Number 19, e to the fourth power equals r. The base of your exponent is the base of your log. So log base e of r equals four. So I can type it in like that. What can I replace this log base e with? Either way, it'll take either way there. Because log base e is the same thing as the natural log. All right, last one like this. R to the D power equals three. The base of your exponent is the base of your log. So log base R of three equals D. Now, 21 through 24 is going to give me the logarithmic equation and ask me to convert it to the exponential equation. So we're going from here to here now, which is actually what we've been doing all along, right? When we were given a log, we were asked to find the logarithm, we kind of turned it into that exponential to, to solve it. So looking at number 21, log base five, Of 25 equals two. So we want to, we're given a log and we want to convert it to an exponent. So the base of the log is the base of the exponent, right? Five to the second power is equal to 25. So if I'm converting this into an exponential equation, log of 100 equals negative two. What's the base of my exponent gonna be? Yeah, right, that's the base here. So I'm gonna have 10 to the negative two power is equal to 0 0.01. Twenty-three. Ln of twenty equals two point nine nine five seven. What's going to be the base of my exponent? What is this one's base? Not ten. E, right? This is log base e of 20 equals 2.9957. So here's my base, E. There's my exponent. So 2.9957 equals 20. Last one like this, log base M of V equals negative Z. 
Now, this will be case sensitive on these. So wherever they use capital letters, you use capital. Wherever they use lowercase, you use lowercase. These are lowercase, that one's capital. So what's your base? M. What's your exponent? Negative Z. And what does that equal? B. Now, 25 through 30 is asking us to find the logarithms using our calculator, because they're going to be not whole numbers like we were finding. They're going to be long decimals, so that's why it's asking us to use our calculator and round it to the nearest four decimal places. Log of 62. So I don't need my log base because it's just log base 10. So I can just use my log button. So again, you're just in your home screen and you are literally just typing that in. Hit your log button. And then in parentheses, put 62. Close it. Hit enter. You're going to get a long decimal. You'll just round it to four decimal places. So I've got 1.79. Two, three, and then after that is a nine, which means I just need to round this up to four. So 1.7924 is your answer. Okay, so it's a decimal because what is this? This is log base 10. 10 to this power is 62, right? It's in between one and two because what's 10 to the first? 10. What's 10 to the second? 100. So do you see why this one is between one and two? Because you're just getting to 62, which is between 10 and 100. Okay, same thing, number 26, log 94, close. So what, so before I hit enter, Where is this going to be? It's base 10. 10 to what power is 94? So it's still going to be between 1 and 2, right? It's just going to be a lot closer to 2 because 94 is a lot closer to 100. It's almost 10 squared. Okay, so hit enter. Round it to four decimals. So you've got 1.9731. Two, which means I don't need to round up. Number 27. What happens when you type this in? Log of negative 16, or in other words, if it's base 10, what power am I gonna raise 10 to in order to make it negative 16? You're not, right? You're not going to turn 10 into a negative number by raising it to an exponent. If your exponent's negative, it's just going to flip the 10. If it's a fraction, it's just going to be a radical over the 10, right? You're not going to raise 10 to a power and turn it into negative. So that's why log negative 16 gives you a non-real answer. So Right, because you're not going to turn a number negative by raising it to any kind of exponent. All right, I'm going to put the rest of these where you're just putting them in your calculator on the board, and then I'll take all real quick, which shouldn't be too difficult. Right? So 28 is ln of. 82, 29 is ln 607.5, and 30 is ln of negative 0 0.97. Punching these in your calculator, the first one. 
Just hit your LN button in parentheses, put 82, close, round it to four decimals. So 4.4067. And then after that is a one, which just means you don't need to round up. This one, LN. 607.5, close, round it to four, 6.4093. Then after the three is a five, which means you do need to round this one up to 6.4094. And what'd you get here? Doesn't exist. Why not? Because it's negative. Okay, now these next ones, there's a few more. <laughs> We're almost done. This one says find the logarithm using the change of base formula. So, we have log base eight of 10. Okay, so you could either use, go to math and use that log base button, or the same thing occurs if you type in log of 10 divided by log of eight. Some people would prefer to type it in like this, so then they don't have to go to math, scroll down and all that. It's about the same amount of work. So log 10, so just log 10 and then divide that by log of eight and enter and round it to four. I don't need to round that up because the next number was a zero. Okay, I'll do one more of these. These are all work the exact same way. Log base six of 15. So just make sure you put the right thing in the top and the bottom, okay? The base is always your denominator. So you're doing this always on top. So log of 15 over log of six. And round that to four places. So 1.5113. The next number is a nine, so I am rounding that up. All right, 33 and 34 are the exact same. I wanna to get to this last problem. So it's asking us to do these two graphs on the same coordinate plane. So I'm gonna put each one of these in my y equals and get some points. So let's see, I'm gonna make an x, y chart for each of these. And then I'll graph them to see how they compare to each other. 35, the last one. All right, so go into y equals and type in two, go up into your exponent and x as your exponent. So two to the x, which is gonna be an exponential graph, which is what we did in the last class. So it's gonna go have that exponential shape. So if you graph it, you'll see that exponential shape. Let's get some points. So second table and let's make some points. Let's see, I've got zero. One, one, two, two, four, and three, eight. Let's plot these. I'll do these in red. So zero, one. Remember, that's the point that all those exponential graphs had in common. One, two. So to the right, one, up two, two, four, right, two, up four. Last one to the right three up eight.
So there is two to the X. Now this is what's called its inverse. So let's type this in our Y equals. So I am gonna use the math down the log base. And then log base two of X. And graph it. So let's get some points on this. So second table and use some points out of there. The first point I'm gonna use is one, zero, two, one, three, 1.585 and four, two. I'll do this one in blue. So let's see, one, zero. So to the right one, up and down zero which is the point that all the log functions have. Two, one. So to the right, two, up one. To the right, three, up about one and a half. And to the right, four, up two. So there's the log function. These are inverses of each other. And I can see that graphically because inverses of each other, if you draw a diagonal line going straight through the origin like that, cutting that graph in half diagonally, the exponential function, if you folded it over that line, would lie right on top of that logarithmic function. So they're inverses of each other. <laughs> 